Hello and welcome. I'm fortunate enough this morning to have the one and only Damien Cooley <laughs> <laughs> with us. There is, in my opinion, no better judge of what's happening across the board in the property market other than Damien. His company gets to see and auction a lot of diverse properties. So it'd be interesting to hear some of his insights. Um, Damo, one of the questions that keeps coming up with my clients in particular is the proposed changes to stamp duty and land tax. <laughs> Oh, oh, what's your take on it? Well, first thing is, um, let's try and rejig how we're gonna get more money out of the property industry. Uh, because the reality of the proposal is that we're just removing one tax and replacing it with another. We're not actually solving the real issue of, of what um, stamp duty was meant for when it first came out. And I think when you look at turnover in real estate, people are holding their properties for a lot longer in today's market than they were you know, 10, 20, 30 years ago. Um, why are they doing that? They're doing it because the cost of transacting is expensive. Stamp duty is expensive. Um, and if they abolish or give you the option to remove stamp duty and pay a, a, uh, a broad-based land tax, a yearly fee, really all you're doing is replacing one tax for another. So I don't think it's actually solving the underlying issue of um, taxing the property industry less. And I think that if, if stamp duty was actually abolished or reduced heavily, people would transact more often and it just, they just end up, may well end up paying more anyhow because they're buying and selling real estate more often. I just question whether if you go with the yearly amount, then you go to sell that asset, um, if this is gazetted and it does come through, whether then that becomes a liability for the next buyer thinking, well, are you, is this being devalued? That could be a possibility. The other thing to, to really be mindful of is that when people buy real estate, they often amortise the stamp duty onto their loan amount. So, you know, if, if they buy a property for $2 million and they write a cheque for 100,000, most people, some people don't have that 100,000, they'll borrow two point, they'll, they'll make the loan to the value of say $2.1 million um, and they'll borrow the stamp duty. And when they borrow the stamp duty, the bank will lend on that. I don't think the bank would lend on a yearly fee to be paid to the government. We're all experiencing a very, very strong market. It's like, what, COVID? Nobody else not COVID, in terms of property anyway. Um, although I have seen in my markets uh, a change in the unit market, definitely there's been some good buying that's been impacted. Pro property prices in the unit market were impacted in terms of investment property. Are you seeing a rebound across Sydney? Um, house market's the strongest market for quite some time. Um, there's no question about that. Top end real estate's flying. Unit market um, isn't as good as the house market. Um, but I do feel like the unit market's yeah. starting to make a little bit of a comeback. Yeah. The investors really fled from the market, but now with interest rates so cheap, you know, you can borrow money on fixed rates for circa 2% for three, four, five years. Yeah. Um, why wouldn't you borrow money, buy a residential yeah. property, if you can buy a house, great, but there's a lot of heat in the house market. If you can buy a, a good solid investment, um, rents will come back. They will come back. Um, and we always see this, this pendulum of house prices going up, rents feeling like they're low, house prices steadying, rents starting to come up. And um, while interest rates are so low, uh, we're certainly gonna see a lot more heat in the market. Suburbs, I get caught up in my little bubble of these and suburbs, and certainly we're seeing within that bubble, uh, certain suburbs do better than most, but everything tends to be doing well. Meaning if it's a good property, well, they're all good properties, but if it's a property that's not being challenged on a busy road or next to a block of apartments, if it hasn't got a bit of a nick to it, so to speak, it is doing extremely well. How are you finding it throughout Sydney? Are there suburbs that are doing better than others or is it just game on? It really is game on, Rick. Um, look, good quality real estate sells well in any market. Um, properties that you say have a few nicks on them, they, they still sell in this market. In a, in a harder market, they're, they're a lot tougher to sell and more challenging. They'll sell for a much discounted price. But in, in this market right now, they're still selling and they're selling quite well. Mm -hmm. what, what we are seeing right across Sydney in, in all markets, frankly, is that the house market's very strong. But we're also seeing particularly strong markets in coastal and regional markets. 30 years of selling real estate, I've never experienced the masses, the masses going outside of Sydney. This is people from Bondi buying <laughs> houses in Womberal, yeah. Terrigal, yeah. Central Coast. They're going down to the Southern Highlands, to Mossvale, to Barrel. 
Um, these are people who are looking at buying in different regional areas. One thing that we have certainly learned in 2020 um, is the value of our lives and the value of time and the value of being happy um, and doing things that are important to you. And we are starting to see or have been seeing for the last six months, people fleeing these uh, Sydney markets and moving to regional areas where they realise that they can either work from home or they want a better quality of life or want more affordability. Do you think that'll be sustainable? I I've got a question mark because I know we've been caught up with, yes, we can work from home now. Is this going to be the norm? I, I think some industries, it will be the norm. Some industries, it will be the norm. But for the majority of industries, it won't. Um, I, my personal opinion on that is that the culture of, of a workplace is incredibly important. And the, the energy, particularly for us, for example, like in a sales-based role, um, that, that energy and that, we feed off that energy. And that energy uh, creates more opportunities, um, conversations that you hear around, people talk about the photocopier and the, around the water station. It's conversations that happen around there that sometimes lead to an opportunity. And those opportunities um, can't be taken if you're not in a workplace environment. But coastal and regional markets are absolutely on fire. Mm. I am hearing some extraordinary things and you're seeing them. Um, two, three months ago, people were worried about JobKeeper, JobSeeker, what impact that was gonna have obviously on the economy and property prices. And back then I would have gone, we're heading for a correction next year with the phasing out of, if it does get phased out, uh, of JobKeeper and JobSeeker. Not so sure now. I think uh, the government's done an incredible job propping the economy up. And I think that the whole purpose of, of all of these incentives for employers and employees um, was all about making sure that we got through this period. And I think, full credit to the government, they've done an unbelievable job helping every single person, I believe, in the country um, be in a better position than they would have otherwise have been. Do I think that that is going to impact our market next year? I think, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I think that, I think particularly in the markets that we sell in, Rick, I think that we, uh, we're fortunate to be in areas where I think everyone's benefited greatly from these payments. I think there's a lot of companies that have actually done even better as a result of these payments um, than, they, than they would have done if, even if they did lose a few employees. So the market will remain strong. 2021 is going to be a big year. Everyone's talking about low supply and to me, the maths are straightforward. If there's not much on the market, great time to be selling, prices stay strong. As more comes on, that tends to plateau way up. The question is, when is there gonna be more coming on? Well, I think uh, the properties are selling faster yeah, too. True. Well, you know, properties are selling faster, so it probably feels like there's not as much on the market. Yeah. Um, the, other, the other determining factor for this whole on-market versus off-market thing is that a lot of people aren't actually seeing these opportunities because there are so many people selling properties off-market that the whole market and the entire market isn't getting the opportunity to see them. What, why anyone would wanna sell their property off-market in the market that we're in right now is absolutely beyond me. I'm hearing so many scenarios where buyers have not seen a property, it's sold, they would have paid more for it, but it was sold off market and it was sold quickly and it was undersold. It's very, very short-sighted, I have to put it out there, to think that you're gonna save a few dollars on some marketing uh, and your perception sometimes as a vendor thinking, well, that's a good price when some of these other results are extraordinary. This is the perfect auction market, it, without it, a doubt. That's why the auction system was created. We're, 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 we're averaging around five bidders per auction. Wow. And that, that's called competition. Yeah. And when you have competition, it gives the owner an opportunity for a premium price. And it not only does that, but it also creates an environment for a buyer to buy in a very transparent environment. And they know who they're competing against. They're not in a situation where they're on the phone. Do they believe the person? Do they not? Is there really someone else there? Is there not? Um, you know, it's a transparent environment and, and it's the fairest way to sell real estate for all parties involved. Mate, thank you. I know you're Pleasure. busy. Damien's become a restaurateur recently. <laughs> yes. What's, uh, what's the restaurant called? Mate, you know, do the things you love, right? Yeah. Um, Cellar Vinoteca. It's in Randwick, Newmarket Dining Precinct. Uh, it's a great wine room. We've just opened our bottle shop uh, and the food is absolutely exquisite. Thanks for that. The food is amazing. Thanks, everyone. Season's greetings. Have a Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy New Year. Thanks, Damien. My pleasure. Thank you.